This is Church Kirk Mill. Uh, it was built in 1853, the earlier parts, uh, by Edmund Kershaw, who was landlord of the Thorn Inn. The Thorn Inn is situated about 100 yards away. Uh, also, a street was named after him, Kershaw Street. And this mill is situated right in the middle of the canal. The canal snakes right round and comes around the bottom of the yard where they could load uh, cotton and wool onto the, on the barges on the canal and then they were shipped off to Liverpool. Um, the canal stretches right down about 100 yards and does a right angle bend and then snakes right around to Blackburn and then on its way further to Liverpool. Uh, this mill uh, has done, undergone alterations and uh, you can see the perimeter wall which still survives today but some of it has been has uh, been replaced by fencing because it's fallen down because it's been here that long uh, and you can just see uh, some of the older pieces uh, the older part of the mill is on the left hand side which you can see from the canal so that's where we're going to head now uh, to get a good view Hello, my name is Gary Britland and I'm at Earl Mill, uh, Church Kirk Mill and uh, as you can see the tooth, uh, saw tooth edge roof behind me, this is the oldest part of the mill, it was a weaving mill and uh, it was built in 1853 by Edmund Kershaw and uh, he was the landlord of the Thorn Inn and uh, it's been redeveloped, it's been enlarged and uh, at the front end is the, the newer part and then this is the older part uh, and as you can see there's a chimney missing and boiler shed well that was taken down about 2013 and the chimney was uh, bent uh, but luckily it had uh, steel bandings that kept it uh, standing but uh, it was probably bent in the explosion in 1917 at Corton Works, which was just across here. And uh, the explosion was that bad that it damaged the chimney. And also it blew the uh, windows out in the nearby church of St. James. And also a farm that had stables and it blew off all the slates. And they had to re-slate the, uh, the building. So there was quite a lot of damage from the explosion as well as uh, the village church, some of the houses were damaged as well. But uh, as you can see behind me, it still survives, does the older part of the mill. Uh, so it's about 170 year old. And uh, the, uh, the mill was leased to a Bradshaw and Rhodes until 1873. Uh, machinery in included 240 looms at the time. And then uh, in 1874, it was sold off uh, in lots, the, the area, the pub. Uh, for some reason, Edmund Kershaw, uh, he didn't die because he died in 1886. So it wasn't because of his death, but... Uh, Probably uh, his brother Philip Kershaw was the person that sold it. Uh, so there's something out in there and I researched it. I can't find out why it was passed to his brother. Maybe he owned all the land, but it was lotted off. And um, in 1874, um, the Thorn Inn was purchased by the Twaites' brewery, which was Daniel Twaites. And the mill uh, was purchased by it was William Hoyle and Nathan Wilkinson. Uh, it was enlarged and uh, it contained 450 looms. It was that big. And uh, the workforce was of 200. Uh, they were weaving uh, cambrics and jacquinets, uh, silks, silk fabrics. And uh, after that, the Wilkinsons, they left uh, in 1883. In 1897, 
Joseph Tomlinson leased it, the mill, and uh, it was in slow decline uh, in the 1900s. Uh, and uh, in 1908, uh, the business was registered uh, as Joseph Tomlinson and Sons, and uh, business wasn't booming then. Uh, whereas at the first, when it was first built, it was booming quite a lot, uh, and um, the mill, uh, like I say, it was known as Earl Mill. Uh, it was purchased uh, by the Earl Company, and that's where the name comes from, Earl Earl Mill uh, of Kirkham, Earl uh, Mill Company of Kirkham, weavers of aeroplane, balloon, and umbrella fabric. So that's where that name comes from. And in 1955, it was sold to Nailers Printers of Oslotwistle, uh, and they were printing football programmes of uh, local teams like Accrington Stanley, Blackpool and Bury. Uh, so they did a lot of printing, and it was known as Nailers Printers. That was the main name. And in 1995, it was leased to Bulls and Brushes and Wipes, and they ran the mill. Uh, until 2012, they decided to purchase it, and uh, that was when the chimney disappeared and they uh, sold cleaning products to the domestic market uh, to the present date and uh, it still survives today so uh, there's still quite a lot of work going on uh, and at one side the uh, the tall four-story building side is a fitness factory and they they still uh, use it for that uh, so uh, we'll carry on with some more videos later Thank you. Bye-bye.